first of all, just like to thank Simon Green for uh, allowing me to be involved in this uh, in this very topical issue. Um, I suppose from the outset, um, as a barrister, I sort of operate in the black and white. So what I'll be talking about is the legislation that applies. There is a lot of grey areas, um, and while when we're looking at the legislation, it does seem to criminalise, or we will see it does actually criminalise underage sexting. Um, I'll leave it to Superintendent Quinn to talk about the prosecution side of it, which is probably the grey area. Um, so I suppose the first thing to talk about, as I said, um, the, the, the legal framework. Um, I suppose the first, the first thing to, to clarify is the difference between civil and criminal law. It's something, as a barrister, you'd often find people confuse. What I'm going to be talking about is the criminal side. That's where you have the state essentially prosecuting you for a criminal offence. There are a number of other issues as well in the civil arena, which as lawyers we've had to try and grapple with. What do you do when you're trying to sue somebody who may have put up images? I can talk about that at the end if people have questions about that. As I'm constrained with time, I'm going to focus essentially just on the criminal legislation and how it applies to underage sexting. Um, so the starting point really is the Child, Traf Child Traffic and Pornography Act. Uh, the first thing to notice is this is the 1998 legislation. This was introduced at a time when people were probably still carrying around a Nokia 3210 at best. This is not designed to, uh, to confront the issues that we see with sexting, either with adults or with, uh, with, with men. This is aimed at traditional child pornography offences, so the predatory instincts or the, the predatory issues where you have older persons targeting children. And the idea behind it, of course, was to stifle child abuse imagery, um, to stifle the market, and it creates three main offences. It creates an offence of creation of child pornography, distribution of child pornography, and possession of child pornography. The point here is there is absolutely no allowance or distinction for underage sexting. This is where I'm talking about the black and white. Underage sexting with your students in your schools it is an offence. It comes within very, very serious legislation. And that serious legislation has very serious consequences. One of the consequences is that you could face up to 14 years in jail. That's never going to happen. But the legislation allows it. It also has consequences in relation to being registered as a sex offender. There are no allowances made here either. There are no exceptions made. So as legislation, as you look at it black and white, as a lawyer, students are falling straight into this legislation. Drilling down into it a little bit more, you have a child is defined a person under 17 years, and child pornography is given a wide definition then, um, a person who is depicted as being a child who is engaged in or is depicted as being engaged in explicit sexual activity, um, and also whose dominant characteristics, so this is as well as sexual activity, whose dominant characteristic is the depiction for a sexual purpose of the genital or anal region of a child. So that's your nude selfies. Um, again, it's coming within the definition. Not only that, the Irish legislation seems to have taken quite a broad approach, again, to try and stifle the traditional child pornography market. It's taken quite a broad approach, again, to the definition of child pornography. Any visual representation or description or information relating to a child that indicates or implies the child is available to be used for the purpose of sexual exploitation within the meaning of Section 3. So again, as a lawyer, what I see here is that potentially the, the suggestive or provocative selfies where you may not have explicit sexual, rep or explicit, explicit sexual representation of a part of the body, it still may be, come within the definition of child pornography. So we see there's three main offences, creation, distribution, and possession. So when you take a picture, it's obviously creation. If it's on your phone, that's possession. When you send it to your boyfriend or girlfriend, or if you send it around the school, that's distribution. They're the three main offences that you should be advising your students that when they take the picture and send it around, that's what they're doing in the eyes of the law. Up to 14 years imprisonment, not only that, and it's unlikely, I suppose, that you'd be put in jail for that, but if there was to be a prosecution, a successful prosecution, you're going to be placed in the Sex Offenders Register. The Sex Offenders Act 2001 creates some exceptions where you won't be placed in the Sex Offenders Register. 
they don't apply to the Child Trafficking and Pornography Act. So as a matter of fact, if there was a prosecution, you would be placed in the Sex Offenders Register. No discretion for the court in this regard. There are some legal anom anomalies then. Uh, sections 2 and 3 of the Criminal Law Sexual Offences Act essentially set the age of consent in Ireland. Um, full sexual intercourse is illegal under the age of 17, essentially. So the age of consent in Ireland is under 17. Sexual activity can take place under the age of 17. So it's, it is defined as sexual activity. And somewhat interestingly, again, as a lawyer, while sexual activity is not illegal, the recording of that activity is under the Child Trafficking and Pornography Act. So you may have a video or a picture of two persons underage and what they're doing is not illegal, but the mere fact that it has been recorded makes that an offence in itself. Now the next piece of legislation of interest is the very recently enacted Children First Act 2015. Now it has been introduced, it has not been commenced. And whether it will be commenced or not obviously is a matter um, for possibly the next government, but the Act has been passed and we just have to wait for it to be commenced. This is what usually happens with legislation. And what this does is it imposes mandatory reporting duties on, on persons, including teachers. And where a mandated person knows, believes, or has reasonable grounds to suspect that a child is being harmed, has been harmed, or is at risk of being harmed, they must report the belief or suspicion uh, to, C to the CFA and the mandated person must also report disclosures by a child. So looking into this act in a little bit more detail, if you think that the child is at harm or at risk of harm, you must report that. And when you look at the definition of harm, harm includes sexual abuse. And when you look at the definition of sexual abuse, sexual abuse includes willful exposure of a child to child pornography. So it would seem, looking at this act, if there is an issue of underage sexting in the school, this act requires you to report it. Again, certainly from a black and white perspective, you would appear to have to report that. The offences under the Child Trafficking and Pornography Act aren't included, so the act sets out a, a schedule of offences and the Child Trafficking and Pornography Act offences aren't included, but the definition of harm is defined so widely and includes child the child, child pornography that it would appear that those wide definitions do in fact include sexting. There are exceptions. Those exceptions seem to refer or seem to relate to where there may be um, a relationship between persons underage and that mandated person will have to make a I suppose, a, an informed call as to whether there is an issue of harm there. But that exception seems to provide for those situations where um, a person may feel like the relationship isn't causing harm to any of the people involved. But those exceptions as well do not refer to child, the Child Trafficking and Pornography Act offences. Just on the civil side then, because it is a topical issue, the civil side is where somebody sues another person so it's a private action between parties. The, the law has also grappled with this issue. Um, the main remedies here would be injunctions to try and take any information that has been posted, take that down, or damages. When it relates to children, it's unlikely this is going to be a huge issue because there's no website will want to have these images on their website. You have a lot of revenge porn websites online. They usually, or they will almost always relate to persons over age because no website is obviously going to want to have child pornography on their website. Um, cause of action in relation to the civil side generally relate to breach of constitutional right to privacy, which isn't particularly well defined in Ireland. We don't have a privacy act, unlike the Defamation Act. Um, possible defamation, but probably not. There's also civil harassment in, in, in contrast to, to criminal harassment and potentially copyright law. But again, this isn't really an issue for today, but just to bring to your attention, there are these civil remedies that may be available. And again, I can talk about these um, perhaps in the question and answer um, at the end. So 
when I was preparing this, uh, this presentation, I was, I was sent a few frequently asked questions um, that, that persons, I suppose, involved in schools tend to ask. Uh, what impact does the criminal justice withholding inf of information on offences against children um, and vulnerable persons act? How does that apply? That doesn't have a definition of harm, unlike the Children's First Act. And I suppose if you look again at the schedule of offences, it doesn't appear to include child trafficking and pornography. So it doesn't appear that the sexting offences come within the scope of this 2012 Act. However, again, if you drill down into the Act, one of the offences it does include is under the Criminal Justice 2000, 2006 Act, which again sets the age of consent, which again makes it illegal for uh, persons under the age of 17 to engage in full sexual activity, so sexual intercourse. That offence is included in the Act, so it would seem if it came to your attention that there was sexting which depicted an offence under the 2006 Act, so if there was an image or a video of underage persons having full sexual activity, full sexual intercourse, that would be, on, would be an offence under this Act, it would appear to trigger that Act. As I said, if the Children First Act comes in, that does have a requirement of harm. In contrast, this uh, 2012 Act doesn't have the requirement of harm. It seems to be a black and white triggering offence. It would appear that in those circumstances, the sexting image or video will actually trigger this Act. And the Children's First Act, as we said, is also something to be very, very, be very aware of. It hasn't yet been commenced. And again, the wide definitions would appear to include sexting. Uh, can an injured party rely on the Defamation Act? That's a civil issue. You probably can't rely on the Defamation Act um, if an image is uploaded. Possibly if the image is uploaded with text which suggests that the person in the image may be available um, for sexual exploitation. That's an issue that actually recently occurred in Cork where um, young persons had their pictures lifted from Facebook and they were all uploaded to another third party website which suggested they were available for essentially sexual favours. That could be defamation, but the Defamation Act isn't really an issue for underage sexting as such. What are the consequences for those that share the sexting images? Uh, the consequences there is distribution of child pornography under the Child Trafficking and Pornography Act and all of the consequences that flow from that act. What are the consequences for those that like postings? This might be more of an issue for cyberbullying, but as it stands, there's no real legal status of liking a post. The most we can see from other jurisdictions is that people have been fired from their jobs for liking Facebook posts, possibly because it's an endorsement of whatever they liked. So there are some cases where someone might have liked a post that, uh, let's say, promoted white supremacy and they've been fired for that. That's about as far as the law has got in relation to likes. And again, it's more of an issue of cyberbullying. Cyberbullying in Ireland is not illegal. Um, it's an issue that we'll eventually have to confront as well. But as it stands today, liking posts um, doesn't really come into the issue of sexting. It's not an offence. And then from a board of management perspective, one often hears the parents of the student who's a victim of the postings wanting the Gardaí to do something about this. I suppose this is more of an issue for Superintendent Quinn again. All I can say is if you're a parent and your child is a victim of sexting, there, are, there have been offences, I suppose, that have been committed. There may even have been an offence committed by your own child if they were the one who created the image. Uh, what powers have the Gardaí to address sexting, posting of images? Well, as we said, sexting is an offence under what is a very serious so they have all the usual powers that they would have, the usual powers of um, stop, search, arrest, detention. Again, more of an issue for Superintendent Quinn. Whether they exercise those powers or not is where we get into the grey area. Should parents report these images to the Gardaí? Again, I suppose it's for everyone to make their own call on that, but if your child is at harm, if there is something that's been going around the school, if it's viral, from a legal perspective, there has been offence committed. What you do about it, I suppose, again, is a call for yourself. Again, a call, or maybe something that Superintendent Quinn would want to talk about. But um, certainly there, have, there would have been offences committed, again, possibly by, by your own child. 
whether they're prosecuted or not again is unlikely. Um, and then of the legislation listed below, I was asked which can be quoted or relied upon. The Non-Fatal Offences Against the Person Act 1997, section 10 of this act creates the criminal offence of harassment. It's something the Law Reform Commission has already looked at. Harassment is defined in Irish law as being, essentially it has to be persistent, which means if there's a one-off distribution of a sexting image that goes viral, that's not harassment because it hasn't been persistent, even though the consequences of it are obviously massive for the, for the person involved. It also requires direct harassment as well, which may be an issue if, if something's uploaded to perhaps a third party website. It's an issue that the Law Reform Commission is looking at because it's a 1997 offence. Again, it's not fit for purpose for, for issues that happen not necessarily on and the Post Office Amendment Act and the Communications Regulations Amendment Act 2007. They both go together, uh, the, the, the 2007 Act amended the earlier 1951 Act. As it stands, it relates to communications by telephone. Again, it's something that's almost definitely going to be updated to, to cover the, I suppose, the um, mobile technology today. So it says telephone, so as it stands, it's unlikely that a prosecution would stand for that. Um, Criminal Damage Act as well. Interestingly, there has been one prosecution successfully in this state where someone was fined 2,000 euros for what's called fraping his ex-girlfriend, so that's, uh, he essentially logged into her Facebook page and uh, posted an image suggesting that she was available for sexual favours, and he was convicted of that. Now, whether that would stand up in court or not, um, or whether it would stand up if it was appealed to the Court of Appeal um, is uncertain, but there was a conviction under the 1991 Act. Again, this is old legislation. It's not fit for purpose. It's not fit for um, issues that occur online, but that did stand up in court. Um, the Theft and Fraud Offences Act as well, um, Section 5 relates to misuse of data or damaging data. Whether that can be used, again, it seems to be stretching, stretching the issue. Um, I suppose the argument would be that you're taking somebody's data and misusing it. Perhaps it might be possible to bring an offence or bring a prosecution under that. Um, the Data Protection Acts as well relate to misusing someone's information. It would include images and videos. Um, and strictly speaking, you probably would be able to get a prosecution under that, but it's not very strong legislation. It's not, again, intended for these types of sexting, um, the sexting behavior, the sexting issues that arise. So I suppose to summarize for principals and teachers and all the people here today, from, as I've said, the black and white legal perspective, sexting between minors is illegal and it's under the 1998 Child Trafficking and Pornography Act. So that's what you need to be telling your students. There's three offences, creation, distribution, and possession. So in your normal sexting, um, in the normal uh, issue of sexting or uh, factual scenario involving underage sexting, you'll probably have at least two, if not three, of those offences being committed and potentially by both parties involved. Uh, you have a potential criminal conviction with up to 14 years prison sentence. I'm not even suggesting for a second that could ever occur but interestingly, it has occurred in America, and America has had to amend their child pornography legislation because prosecutors have prosecuted underage persons all the ways through the courts. And what we see is in America, the sex offender registration laws are way over the top compared to the Irish laws, so you can't even live in a house with, with, with someone who's underage. Uh, there's one case, Philip Alpert, if you looked it up online, this occurred in Florida. He sent around a picture of his, uh, his, of his ex-girlfriend. He was prosecuted right the way through, and he had to move out of his house because he had a younger sister. And the laws in Florida at the time wouldn't allow someone convicted of, a, of a, essentially one of those um, offences under the Child Pornography Act. They, couldn't, they wouldn't allow you to live in a house with someone who's underage. And he had to move out of the community because he couldn't live near a school. You couldn't live near a park. So the point is, in other jurisdictions in America, they have been prosecuted. We're not saying it's going to happen in Ireland, but I suppose just to be aware of it. Um, under the Act, under the Irish legislation, you will be registered as a sex offender. Uh, minors are prosecuted for underage sexual activity in America. It hasn't happened in Ireland yet. It is left to the discretion of the prosecutor, something that Superintendent Quinn will discuss with you. Um, there's probably going to be a high-profile case in Ireland at some stage. 
experience tells us from other jurisdictions what has happened is there has been instances of, instances of sexting which have led to suicide. This has happened in America, Australia, Canada. And unfortunately, it would appear, following on from that, it possibly could happen in this country. It could be a high profile issue at some stage where it's going to be put straight back into the spotlight again. Um, finally, the Children First Act will impose reporting duties on teachers. It would appear to cover instances of sexting. Policies for schools are essential. This might be something I could talk about in the questions and answers. Policies are absolutely essential. You have to have your policy in place and teachers, <coughs> students and parents need to be aware of what the policy is. And I suppose a proactive approach is needed. It's, it's, it's too late now to just shut your eyes. This is happening in schools and it does come within criminal legislation. It is illegal. And I suppose schools, parents, teachers, we all need to be aware of it so we can know how to confront it when it does arise. Uh, so thanks for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the morning. Thanks.